Praise the Lord. Bless every one of you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Corbin Nash from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And today we're talking about who are you. Uh, our keynote scripture is going to come in 1 uh, Peter 2 and 2. In the 1 Peter 2 and 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And in verse 6 it says, Wherefore, uh, also it is contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which uh, be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a stone of offense, even to them, would stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. And in verse 9 it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who call you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Well, First uh, Peter 2 uh, has a lot of uh, enlightening information That's right. uh, for us, amen, as, as Christians, amen. And if you want to know who you are, it's good to, to study 1 Peter 2 because it's telling you a lot of things. First of all, it tells you that you are babes because in verse 2 it says, as newborn babes desire the sincere, that means pure or spiritual milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. So no matter what age you are chronologically, you can be 100 years, or you can be 50 years old, 30 years old. When you are born again, you become a babe. Babe in what? A babe in Christ. That's right. And as babe in Christ, you need some milk, praise the Lord. And it says, as newborn babes, it says you should desire the sincere milk of the word whereby you may grow. And so as babes in Christ, okay, uh, that's who you are. If you're just born again, you're a babe in Christ. If you're a baby of Christ, you should get into the Word so you can grow. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto carnal. For even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye have not able to bear, neither yet ye now are able. For ye are yet carnal. For as there is amongst you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal? Are you not carnal and walk as men? So in, in this particular case, we can see that the Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Corinth, and he's telling them they're still babies. He fed them a lot of milk, which is the word of God, but they still act as if they are carnal or fleshly, because uh, amongst them is envy and strife and division. And so they walk as men and not as a spiritual giants or spiritual, uh, spiritually mature people. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we are babies when you're first born again, but you must grow. Get into the Word. Amen. And go to high heights and deeper depths of God. Okay, in verse 3 of uh, 1 Peter, look what it says. In verse, uh, verse 3 of 1 Peter 2, it says, If so, be ye. Uh, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Okay. Now, in other words, uh, you've tasted that the Lord is gracious. In other words, you're supposed to have a spiritual appetite That's right. for the word of God. Amen. Amen. So you got it. In order for you to grow, you got the spiritual appetite for the word of God. You can't be like babies, but you got to stay on that word of God, which is the milk, until you grow. Grow spiritually. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, in verse 4 it says, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Amen. Now, what stone is he talking about? He's talking about the living stone, which is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Because in Isaiah, if you turn to Isaiah 28 and 16, somebody say Isaiah 28 and 16. 
It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes should not make haste. Amen. That's Isaiah 28 and 16. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then in Matthew 16 and 18. If you look at Matthew 16 and 18, we're talking about Jesus as that stone. It says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Well, what rock is he talking about? He's not talking about Peter. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is the, is the rock. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then in Matthew 21 and 42, if you look at Matthew 21 and 42, it says that uh, Jesus said unto them, did he ever read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? Is uh, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes? But what stones he talking about? He's still talking about Jesus. Praise the Lord! It's the, as the chief cornerstone, because in Matthew twenty-one and forty-four it says, "Whoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whoever it shall fall, it will." Grind him to power. Well, what is he talking about? What stone is he talking about? He's talking about little Jesus. Amen. There's two ways you can you can approach that stone. You can fall on it. That means you can repent. And then another way, it will fall on you. <laughs> In other words, you know, you will end up uh, receiving the judgment from the stone. <laughs> Amen. And then in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 3 and 11, it says, For other foundations can no man lay than that was laid, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. So we know that Christ Jesus is the stone. He's the foundation. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Now, if Jesus is the stone, the foundational stone. Amen. There must be some other stone. That's right. Because in verse uh, 5, it says, uh, He also has lively stones. I built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up sacrifices accepted, uh, acceptable to God by Christ, uh, Jesus Christ. That's in verse 5 of 1 Peter. Second chapter. Let me look to read that again. He also is lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So we are, we are lively stone. That's us. We are lively stone. That's right. We built up on the chief cornerstone, right. the headstone. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we built up on <laughs> Jesus. Amen. And we're lively stone. Amen. Okay, we built on Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 9, look and see what it said. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 9, it says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's what? Building. So he, he looks at us and says, We're God's building. Well, we're lively stones built up on Jesus. And then in Ephesians 2 and 19, it says, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So we know that Jesus, chief cornerstone, praise the Lord, amen, and we're the liveliest stone. That's right. Somebody said liveliest stone. Liveliest stone. Praise the Lord, amen. Now back in verse 5, it says, You also as lively stones are built upon a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now we're going to look at the holy priesthood side because all believers are priests. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. And uh, uh, so that's the, uh, we know that, that all believers are priests. Praise the Lord. That's amen? Right. And then not only that, amen, it says we're to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. Now, what is our spiritual sacrifice? Well, one of your spiritual sacrifices is mentioned in Hebrews 13 and 15. Because in Hebrews 13 and 15, it says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amen. 
So we know right here that praise is a spiritual sacrifice. That's one type of spiritual sacrifice. Okay. And then in Philippians 4 and 18. Amen. It's going to show you another type of sacrifice. In Philippians 4 and 18, it says, But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus, the things which are sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice of acceptable, well pleasing to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, what is he talking about there? He's talking about supplying Paul's needs. That's right. So he's talking about right here money. He's talking about money is, is a sacrifice mm -hmm. under God. Amen. And then finally in Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech thee therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holding it acceptable to God with your reasonable service. So we see that your body is a sacrifice. That's right. Under God. Amen. So if you are uh, uh, your priest, you know, in the eyes of God, amen, you want to offer up spiritual sacrifices. And those spiritual sacrifices are praises, money, and yourself. Praise money and yourself. If you want to get deep, you know, Amen. offer up your, your prayer. You know, because usually a person, if he got some money, if he loves somebody, money, there's no option. That's right. Amen. He'd give her that money. Praise the Lord. Amen. But a lot of times when you love yourself more, you love the other person. Praise the Lord. You won't give no money. Praise the Lord. But money is offered up to somebody that you love. Amen. So we want to offer up not only praise, we just want to have it in the mouth. We want to have it in the finances, which is money. And you want to have it in the body. Amen. Amen. To present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, is through a reasonable service, be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed, but a renewing of your mind. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, we're going to talk about more about this next week. And, but we did cover this phase of who are you. Thank you.